ಯಸ್ವಿಜ್ಞಾನವಾನ್ಭವತ್ಯಮನಸ್ಕಸಿಸತ್ಪದಮಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಸಂಸಾರಂ ಚಾಗತಿ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ದಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚಾರಿಯಟ್ does not attain that goal through the intellect who being associated with a non-discriminating intellect and an uncontrollable mind is ever impure he attains worldly existence yastu vigyana van bhavati samanas ka sada shuchihi ಸಾಧು ತತ್ಪದಮಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಯಸ್ಮಾಭೂಯೋ ನ ಜಾಯತೆ ದಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚಾರಿಯಟ್ ಹೌವೆವರ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಮಿನೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಡೌಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಎವರ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಅಟೈನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬೋರ್ನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಸಾರಥಿರ್ಯಸ್ತು ಮನ ಪ್ರಗ್ರಹವಾನ ಸೋಧ್ವನ ಪಾರಮಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ತತ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪರಮಂ ಪದಂ The man, however, who has as his charioteer a discriminating intellect and who has under control the reins of the mind attains the end of the road, that is, the highest place of Vishnu. Namaste. Well, I didn't do the tika on these three verses because... their construction is parallel with the preceding two verses 5 and 6 and you know they're so simple they're very direct and straightforward and there's no real uh additional information in the tikas so that gives me more time to talk about the meaning now the interesting thing in the final verse verse 9 are the words tat paramam padam that supreme destination and that indicates vishnu there's a very famous verse from the rigveda aum tat vishnu paramam padam sada pashyanti suraya diviva chakshura tatam tad vipraso vipanyavo jagrivangsas samindhate vishnur yat paramam padam just as the sun's rays in the sky are extended to the mundane vision in the same way the wise and learned devotees always see the supreme abode of lord vishnu because those supremely praiseworthy and spiritually awake devotees are able to see the spiritual world they are also able to reveal that supreme abode of lord vishnu so that certainly applies to shankaracharya here in his comments on this very esoteric upanishad because without knowing the relationship between the various levels of reality that he describes here it would be hard to observe these things in ourselves during meditation which is after all the whole point it's not just theoretical knowledge is meant to be applied and in fact that goes for all the things we talk about on this channel and have discussed for many years now that we are meant to see these things in ourselves in our experience we're meant to experience them not just talk about them I think a lot of teachers get hung up on this point um because they're committed to a specific doctrine. Well, we're not like that. We see that there is one absolute truth and that can be experienced. The scriptures simply help us to experience it by talking about it in different ways. and of course there are many different scriptures many different metaphors of the supreme and many different approaches by meditation 
to that supreme experience. And the path of Vishnu Bhakti is one of them. So, actually, who is Vishnu or what is Vishnu? And what relationship does he have to the other things mentioned in these three verses? So, for that information, let me go to Shankaracharya's purports, his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, which is very interesting. And I'm going to read from the introduction. Narayana is beyond the avyakta. From the avyakta, the mundane egg is born. That's Hiranyagarbha. Within the mundane egg, verily, are these worlds and the earth made up of the seven dvipas, or islands. This is a Puranic verse speaking of the Antaryamin, the inner guide and regulator of all souls. It is quoted here by the commentator in order that he may begin his important work after the orthodox fashion with the contemplation of his favorite god, Ishtadevata, namely Narayana and further with a view to show that the Purana, archaic history, the Itihasa, ancient tradition, and the Gita teach one and the same doctrine. Narayana is, in the popular conception, the creator who was brooding over the waters just before the beginning of creation. See Manu 1.10. According to a subtler conception, Narayan is the Antaryamin, the divine being in whom all embodied souls have their being. He is not a creature of the Avyakta, but far transcends it. It is the Avyakta, the Arvyakrita, Maya, the undifferentiated matter, out of which, when in apparent union with Ishwara, is evolved the principle of Hiranyagarbha, here spoken as the Anda, or the mundane egg, which is composed of the five simple rudimental elements of matter. An intermingling of the five rudimental elements of matter gives rise to the principle of the viraj, of which are formed the earth and all the other lokas or inhabited regions. The seven dvipas, or insular continents, are Jambu, Plaksha, Kusha, Kroncha, Shaka, Salmala, and Pushkara. We don't need to go into all those details to understand the general principle that we have been talking about the virat. Death is the virat, the eater of souls. He is the one who separates, first of all, the subtle bodies from the gross body, and then the subtle bodies from the being, and consumes them as his food, literally. So, you know, we should understand, we think we are at the top of the food chain, <laughs> we're not. Everybody in the material world is both the eater and the eaten. This is the nature of the world as food. And this is discussed extensively in Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, which we'll get to in a, a next series. But for now, try to understand that every body, every species, every type of being is eaten by another type of being. They are prey. We are prey for the higher beings, the demigods, uh, and ultimately Virat. So Virat, being the sum total of all beings in the material world, is higher than even the demigods. But higher than him is the avyakta, the unmanifest realm of the five raw elements. What are they? Earth, water, fire, air, and space, avyakta, unmanifest. So we, we don't think of these as elements, we think of them as states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and empty space. So then, beyond all these is Vishnu. Vishnu is like the sum total of the consciousness. In other words, the living entities themselves, not their minds, not their intelligence, not their egos, 
not their vital force, prana. Now, these are the subtle bodies. Prana maya kosha, the energy body, vital energy. Mano maya kosha, the mind. The vijnana maya kosha, or intelligence. And finally, the ananda maya kosha, which is pure consciousness and bliss. So you could say that whereas viraj is the sum total of all the subtle bodies of the living entities, meaning vital energy, mind, and intelligence, that Vishnu is the sum total of the consciousness of all the living entities in the creation. And from him are coming all the individual souls. Huh? It's not a really a, a, very, a very good term because it has so much baggage from Christian and other dualistic religions. But we can say in general that the individuals, those who want to be separate from Brahman and take on upadis to give themselves an individual existence, a separate intelligence, mind, desires, and so on, the conditioned beings in the material world generally are part of Vishnu. So we'll get into this more in the next episode uh, where he continues this description of the different levels of reality and how the yogi, by transcending one after the other, winds up at the supreme destination. And what is that? Actually, it's the lower Brahman. It's the subsidiary Brahman. It's the conditioned Brahman. The Brahman that becomes Maya, uh, which is covered by Upadis. And from that, of course, the whole material creation takes place. Or within that, the whole material creation with its temporary and limited beings and other existences comes forth or appears to <laughs> because the whole thing is simply a mirage. There is no substance to it. And the proof of that is it's temporary. Everything in this material world changes into something else, isn't it? So we should not be attached. We should not become uh, an owner of anything in this world because or we should not identify also with these things in the material world such as the body because it's going to go away and when it does if we're attached to it it's going to cause us a lot of suffering so we should see beyond this body beyond this life even beyond the concept of individual existence and realize that we are one with Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. We are the all, the everything. We are all souls. We are all worlds. We are all the beings that were, are, and ever will be. We are Vishnu. And we are beyond Vishnu. Because Brahman is even higher than him. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung Aung Namah Shivaya